um, a company that focuses on uh, web development and so now he will uh, introduce us to programming mobile application with Python. Andres, the show is yours. Okay, thanks. So, right, I will talk about programming mobile phones and tablets. Um, this will be a, like a talk for beginners with a like, kind of overview. If you, have, if you are experienced with programming mobile phones, and especially with Python, this will be boring for you. You should now leave. Now leave. Um, I'm, um, well, I'm going to start about myself. I'm, um, in my real life, I'm working for the German Aerospace Center. I'm a scientist and head of department doing management all the time, very little programming. And in the evening and the weekends, and uh, as a hobby, I have founded a company for developing um, software for mobile phones. And I've always a couple of devices with me, like a good old Windows 7.5 phone, and I have an iPad somewhere and all this stuff. So I just crashed this Acer that you can see there. It's uh, not working anymore. I wanted to use it for the uh, online demo, but it's not going to happen. And um, what we're doing in the company, Bedando, is we are developing apps for, for mobile health. That's just because I had some kind of medical trouble a couple of years ago with a stroke, and I had to to learn, learn to speak again. I couldn't speak for half a year. And then I figured out that there wasn't the right apps and so software products to help me um, to, to find my speech again. So I decided to found a company and develop this kind of software. So the another thing is that this example is for like measuring um, blood pressure, recording blood pressure. Some people call it quantified self. This is actually my blood pressure from with the values up to yesterday. It's a little bit high this week. I had stress with the travel to to Florence, and I guess currently now it's also a little bit high, but I will not measure it. Um, so in the company we are doing these developments in Java. So the people who are with me in the company are all like fascinated from this language Java. Um, I'm not on that way. I had, had to program Java a couple of years ago. I call it now the dark ages of my life. Um, I, it, it was for money, of course. And so now, but and a lot of people have experience with Java, and especially if you want to do programming for mobile phones, for Android or iOS, um, you have to use Java for Android or, or Objective, Objective-C for um, iOS. And so I, I personally cannot really um, contribute to the development of our products. So my goal is to like, do something with Python. And this is, um, the talk is about, about the possibilities that we have, that I have, doing software development with Python for mobile phones. So the first section is about a little bit about what is an app in our context, about, about statistics. Then I will um, say something about the early days in mobile development with Python, a couple of years ago, and the current um, status of mobile development, and then the rest. Okay, so what is a mobile app? An app today um, named, names the software that is designed to run on a smartphone or a tablet computer or on other um, uh, mobile devices, like uh, there are, for example, like Kindles or like um, LiveScribe pens, which all have apps on it. Um, these devices usually have in common that they are, have limited memory, lim limited um, um, CPU power, small screen sizes. Usually today they have touch, touch screen or touch uh, UIs, and um, Software for these devices must be um, uh, battery efficient, not waste any any powerful battery because all these devices are running on battery almost all the time. Um, apps run on mobile operating systems like Android, iOS, and so on. Um, they are distributed um, through application distributed platforms, as like the general term. I will um, show an example later. 
and they are either free or paid. That's an uh, uh, distinction. And the word app was very common a couple of years ago. It was the word of the year in the US, which I read a couple of days ago at Wikipedia. So it wasn't word of the year in Germany, I guess, but um, in the US. So what is a smartphone? A smartphone is a mobile phone based on a mobile operating <coughs> platform. That's the Wikipedia definition. It combines functions from PDA, it has camera, media player, web browser, and a couple of uh, other things too. It's equipped usually with um, touch screens, high speed networking, GPS, NFC, acceleration sensors, which are really useful for like experiments too. And on the, on the right side, you can do, see like the development from. Um, so it's the interesting thing is that most companies, the devices are getting like smaller and on Apple, the devices are getting like, like bigger. I've found that really fascinating. Um, a tablet, what is a tablet? It's more like a, a mobile computer. It's, it's usually larger than a smartphone. It's built around like a, a touch screen device like this. No, no keyboard, only virtual keyboard. Sometimes you have a pen. This is like, I have here a Lenovo model, a ThinkPad. This has a digital pen, which I, phew, no, I, I don't use it, and I haven't even tried. So, but it's equipped with some stuff. Um, the hardware architectures are mostly based on X38 or ARM. So mobile operating systems, very popular today is Android, iOS, Windows Phone, and so forth. As you can see, the Android Druid is the king of these operating systems today. Um, this is a chart showing the, the smartphone sales and the, um, the um, operating systems on it. And Android is growing up. All other uh, iOS is also growing up. And especially Symbian from Nokia or around Nokia is going down. Um, app distribution, as I said, is, do, is done usually by app distribution platforms and that's are actually the like app markets or app stores and Google, Google now call it Google Play, Windows Phone Marketplace, Blueberry App World and so on. And of course there are a couple of more like app markets. Um, cross-platform app markets, manufacturer-specific, carrier-specific, like telecom, T-Mobile has an app market, or, or Amazon has, has an, its own app market, and so on. And <clears throat> they make a lot of money in, in, in revenue from these. It's a, like a figure from 2009 to 2010. There was more than two billion uh, US dollars in revenue. And this, this will go up in the future. This is like a prediction until 2014, which will go up to more than 8 billion US dollars in revenue. Quite a big market. Um, the number of apps in these app stores, um, well, in the Apple App Store, there are currently, in April, there were about um, um, more than 500,000 apps um, in the Google Play. In, in, in Google Play, there are um, this month in June or last month in June, there were more than 600,000 apps. It's quite a number. That's the downloads. And in the Windows Phone marketplace for VP7, Windows Phone 7, there are almost 100,000 apps. A lot of apps, but as I figured out, almost none of them are actually implemented in Python, which I think is a bit of shame. Um, sorry? Not, Android for Python. It's not on the market, yes. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. I'll show an example later. So um, why is it not happening? Why are not more apps on the app markets? And what are the chances to well, develop an app? Python. In the early days, a couple of years ago, we had like Symbian as the major um, operating system with um, a huge company called Nokia at that time. Um, when I was young, I had always like Nokia devices, the N series and so really cool phones, N95 and N90, 
where the N96 was very bad. Uh, but there, there were cool devices. You could do, you could, uh, do a lot of stuff with them. Um, they, and they were equipped with Symbian. Symbian is an operating system for smartphones and deep, um, PDAs, microkernel, so the too big single user as most of these operating systems. It's user interface centric. It has an, um, like an um, application framework with, this, with it and a user interface framework called S60. And programming for Symbian, well, it was, it was easy. You had a couple of options like C++, Java, and web widgets where the, in the first place the, um, the um, things that Nokia pushed, as Nokia provided. Later on there came Flashlight and Python. And especially the Python for X60 implementation is, was a Python port for, or is a Python port for X60 developed by Nokia as an open source product. The last release was formed in the year 2009, and it's not developed anymore. But the code and the um, um, packages are still available. The program with, with this Pi S60 was very easy, like in, um, in Hello World was like in any other example very, very short and you can have a notification dialogue with Hello World and it looks like you start on the, on the start screen, you have a Python interpreter, you can like run scripts yeah, or you can um, work with an interactive console and end of commands and execute them immediately. And you have access to all the APIs from the Nokia phone, like telephone and GPS and, and location-based services and so on. <coughs> so it's really nice. And um, the structure of um, the program was relatively easy with um, modules, setting screen size, menu, defining menu, um, doing like stuff in the application body and the main loop. And this is all the the code that you need to, to write an app with Python for, for Symbian. Um, at the time, well, as I said, when I was young, I did a lot of stuff. I had an, an, an app written for me that notifies my wife, that notified my wife when I was coming like home. It pulls the, the um, cell ID of my, of my apartment in Cologne, Germany. So this is actually a real cell ID. And then when I entered this area, my wife got an SMS with where well, I could um, set some kind of mood and she you knows what will happen. Um, this, is, this, is, this was one of the few codes which are really used in, pro in production, right? I used it and a couple of my friends, I used it too. Um, today, actually in the, in the company at Modando, we are working, we are, we are developing kind of similar products with Symbian for all Nokia devices, like, like it's just like a tracking device for dogs. Like it's a simple, simple script which we put on, a, on old phones which we buy cheap on the market on eBay and, and attach it to dogs. And then if the dog is running around in the forest or somewhere else, um, the owner gets an, via an SMS or via an email gets the GPS coordinates of the dog every few minutes or whatever he likes. It's a, I think it's a, a nice reuse of this old, old um, like uh, Nokia phones. And you could also do like um, graphical stuff, open GL graphics and so on. So I couldn't do it here like, like as a real demo because my, my, my phone from that time isn't working anymore. It's a shame. So the other operating system at the time was um, Windows Mobile. Um, or Win Windows CE for Microsoft. It's also for, for smartphone based on the Microsoft CE kernel implemented in C. Um, programming for it was mainly in C++ or in, in .NET, but um, Microsoft also provided like um, support for TickleTK and um, there was a Python, imp Python implementation called Python CE. This was an open source project. It's also outdated since um, 2007. And the programming with it was similar to the Symbian programming. Also that it's simply presenting a message like my message and with an application title, it's just three lines. <clears throat> so 
So today, current mobile development with Python is more like um, using Android, iOS, or Windows Phone. <coughs> yeah, for Android, I guess, who in this room has an Android phone, actually? Is it majority? Who has an iOS phone, I iPhone? Oh, and who has a Windows phone? Oh, three. three. <laughs> Good. It's more than I've expected. <laughs> so if I'm asking in my, my, my lab at DLR, I'm the only person who raises the hand. So we start with Android. Android is like a Linux-based operating system um, for mobile devices developed by the Open Headset Alliance, which is really led by Google and a couple of other companies. It's open source, which is an Apache license. Um, the libraries and APIs are mostly written in C, and it has, on top of that, it has an, um, like an application framework in Java. Um, well, you cannot see the graphic. You can find the, uh, the, the diagram on, I guess it's from, from Wikipedia or from the Google homepage. Um, there is a special virtual Java virtual machine called Dalvik for, for um, Android. And also, I'm not well. Um, and it's for for the ARM platform. So, it's for the one tail. Um, so apps are usually developed in Java, in the Java language. Um, the software development tools that you have at hand are in the Android Development Kit from Google, from Android Native Development Kit for like working with C code. There are solutions like an App Inventor where you can click your user interface. But I think this this one is like um, um, it's not not active anymore. Um, and you have like the simple project and basic for Android to do basic uh, programming in basic for Android, which I didn't try, and a couple of other implementations. And Python, um, yeah, we have for Python we have several options. A couple of these options are like are like raising at the moment under under good development. And um, if you are around all the days here, you will see that a lot of like talks and tutorials are dealing with the subject. There was the talk, the tutorial this morning by Thomas Pearl um, about um, well, PySite and uh, Python for Android. Yeah, you know. And um, there's also a talk on on. Thursday about um, um, a scripting layer for Android, and there's a TV poster outside and so on. Um, so what are the different te technologies? Like the scripting layer, layer for Android, um, well, basically it executes scripts, and it has an interpreter, interactive interpreter on Android. And um, it has access to many of Android's APIs. And it supports not only Python, but also like has interpreters for Perl, Ruby, Lua, Beanshell, JavaScript, Tickle, and maybe some others too. Um, it's open source and available on Google Code. Um, it has, well, very limited support for user interfaces, user, user interface elements like dialogues, you have toasts, and progress bar toasts, it's like small messages like notifications, and an interactive console that you can use. Um, uh, you can add scripts, execute the scripts, of course. You can share scripts. It's generating a barcode which contains like a text of the script. Or you can build like APK, uh, uh, APKs, ar archives that you can distribute. So the Hello World program with, with um, SL4A is also very simple, um, as you can see. Um, well, we then have Python for Android. Python for Android is actually the, the, the Python interpreter for Android. That is included into the SL4A package. One of the interpreters in SL4A is this Python for Android. It's actually the C Python implementation cross-compiled for Android. Therefore, yes, for Android, and used in SL4A. 
of course, then it has access to many of Android APIs, Android APIs. Native UI support is really not complete. That's um, a drawback. To, to build an app out of that, um, that you can distribute, you have to build like an APK, APK in, um, for Android. And to, in order to do that, you have to like um, include the in Android interpreter into the APK together with your scripts. That's really possible. Um, I've tried, and a couple of others, I saw a couple of other examples. Um, there's a special project for that, which has template fa files and, and build files. And basically, you have to like um, change the name of the script in a, in a Java file with constants. Then you can um, build like an APK, APK and distribute it. Um, so, really, really nice thing is Kiwi. Kiwi is like a cross-platform framework for user interfaces, especially for multi-touch user interfaces. Um, the Kiwi does not run only on Android, but also on iOS, Linux, Windows, macOS, and it uses OpenGL ES for, for graphics, which makes it really fast. It's open source, and you can see it at kiwi.org. And I guess most of the Kiwi developers are at, at GeoPython. I've seen a few of them here. So the Hello World here, this is an example from the Kiwi website. It's, um, um, it's almost as simple as the other applications. We have imported Kiwi, Kiwi modules and then um, uh, present a button with Hello World. It's more complicated than a simple print statement, but it's really, really easy. Um, if you want more details on Kiwi, which I really rec can recommend, is you should see the Kiwi poster outside. So I think after the coffee break, you see the poster session. It's a good chance to, to go there and um, read the Kiwi poster, ask um, of the people from the Kiwi team. Um, Kiwi is really the technology that we are going to use in the future more and more. Like, as I said in the beginning, um, currently most of our projects are, are written in Java. But what, what we started actually a couple of months ago is doing like prototyping of applications in this Kiwi in, in Python. And this is not only for like for Android applications. So Yes, uh, do I have an, I couldn't attach this to the to the screen, so I'm sure you all can see it very clearly. Yeah, it's a very big display, and if I start Kiwi, I have like the choice of installed applications. Yeah, can you read it on the back? Yes, <laughs> I cannot read it from here, so it's even worse. And you can start like um, this is like inspired by the memory game that you can see in the, in the, um, in the gallery on the Kiwi homepage. Um, what we are currently developing on iOS is an application for, for kids for speech therapy. So kids um, must be like motivated to do speech therapy training. And so we um, are developing a memory game where you can like must find the matching dragons. This is a small dragon, Luki, in behind. Um, so this is not working for me. Am I not so good in this stuff? Yeah, oh yes, I got two. And, um, so what's, what's not included in this prototype is if a child um, got a matching pair, uh, it has to make like an, um, a training session with the particular um, Training that is is, is, uh, is, is is drawn in this in this small dragon here. It's really nice. If you if you like to see it from near, if you really like to see it, you can come to me afterwards and I give you a demonstration. Um, so the key is what we are going to use. We are going to use Kiwi a lot for prototyping things in in um, in Python things 
applications for iOS and for, for Android. And maybe if this if the distribution to the um, to the markets is um, is working, maybe um, the real products will be implemented in Python in the future. Um, I personally hoping that. So next thing is PySite for Android. Um, this is if you want to have more like more sophisticated user interfaces beside very simple elements and beside like web-based solutions where um, you have to use like you can use Qt, Qt implementation. Um, this is um, based also on Python for Android. You use a special Qt implementation for Android and the Python bindings for Qt. This is um, called by, um, PySide. And you can see the, it's on all the stuff, all the information is on the website of um, Thomas Pearl. Um, let's give it a try, it's really nice. So I will skip this example. Um, another thing is like there's also a Pygame available on Android. Pygame is a, well actually a subset. Um, this is one I did try it by myself, but I think it's very good for for developing simple games. Yeah. So the next thing is iOS. iOS is um, who is um, more complicated. <clears throat> Actually, I who if I'm taking the the topic of my talk seriously, I had to. I must stop the talk now because there is no really good solution for iOS. Um, iOS as an operating system for by Apple, it has a uh, multi-touch user interface with several operating system la layers. Programming in iOS is mostly written, uh, done in Objective C. This is also enforced by Apple. They provide a software development kit and the integrated development environment, Xcode. And Python on iOS is almost not possible. Not possible. There are, of course, like um, Python interpreters compiled for for iOS. Like if you go into the um, App Store from Apple, there's Python for iOS by Jonathan Hosmer. It costs two dollars ninety nine cents. It's not that free. And you can download that and start an interactive Python interpreter and like load scripts, save scripts and well, what's it? It has also an option for email scripts. Well, this is in large. And um, this is just good for playing around. I, also, I use it for my daily work as um, a replacement for a calculator. So this is good. It's really good. But it's not not useful for for really development apps, for developing apps. And it's also good because it has the Python um, documentation included. So you do not have to install another set of documentation. Um, so um, this is a nice tool if you use the calculator or whatever, um, but it's not good for um, developing apps. Um, so. What I saw just yesterday is that you can now um, publish, um, well, prepare apps for for um, for iOS with Kiwi, and publish actually it uh, in the App Store. So I guess this is the only one, the Flag Touch um, from around the Kiwi team, and um, I, I'm hoping that many many more apps with this. This is technology behind are, um, are coming in the App Store in the next um, weeks or months. So actually, my company is definitely going to to publish a couple of apps with Kiwi in the App Store. So the last of the three great major operating systems is Windows Phone, real new. Um, Windows Phone is by Microsoft a successor to Microsoft Mobile. Um, programming from Windows Phone basically um, yeah, means you have to program on XNA or Silverlight. Those are like Microsoft technologies, Microsoft frameworks for software development for the .NET platform. 
Windows or Microsoft provides all the software development kits for it. The support by Microsoft and um, the documentation is, is really good. That's the thing that um, one of the things that um, where Microsoft is really good in at yeah? developer support. But they are not not really good in supporting Python developers. Well, um, actually that's it's going to change a bit. There is like the um, Visual Studio for Python, which you can use, and so also, also Iron Python, and which are yet in the in um, in use in the um, version 2.7.2 of Iron Python in in March. Uh, is that there is no preliminary support for Windows Phone 7.5. So, but actually, currently there is no good documentation for it. So I personally had no time to figure this out. This is, will be the next like thing that I have to try, that I want to try in the next weeks or months during the summer, to like how to figure out pro Python programming on Windows Phone. Okay. Oh, plenty of time left. So the rest, um, no, I'm not finished. There are also other mobile devices. As I said, the LiveScribe pen, this is a pen with, which works on, on like digital paper with very small dots. And if you're writing something, all the writings and paintings are stored in the pen as a memory. And you can, you can record your speech with this pen um, and synchronize the writing with the speech. It's really nice. Um, yet the company are going to develop apps for the health sector for that pen too. I, I used this pen when I was in rehab. I was one of the um, one of the things when I had the stroke. I couldn't use my right hand, so I had to learn to write again and use the hand again. And I used the I wrote a small app for LiveScribe pen. Which detects when I was when I, one of the one of the um, things I had to do was um, uh, drawing circles, which is easy if you have no stroke, but it can be very difficult if you have like a brain problem, whatever. And I had written a small um, Java program, small app, Java app for this for this pen, who who uh, who um, recognizes if my circles are are really like perfect or not so perfect. I, I use it um, by myself, and we are now going to like uh, developing apps and um, sell it to like um, um, clinics and and so on. And maybe also there's the possibility to develop something for for Kindle, but I'm not sure about that. I know it's like developed in Java, and both do not have any Python support. So what we are going to try for the LiveScribe pen is like using JSON, of course. So if you're in the Java world, first thing is import JSON, of course. And maybe it's also working for Kindle. It's a thing to try out. So summary. The summary is very, this is the short version of the summary. Um, Python support on the well, four major operating systems on Symbian which is outdated, but this is the only clear yes said. Good support. In Python interpreter by Nokia, you can write apps and distribute apps in the app markets or app stores. On Android, yes, with restrictions. As I said, iOS is with Kiwi, it's somewhat possible, but um, really neat would be to get like support from Apple or so. That was really nice. And Windows Phone, well, not now, maybe in the future. So Microsoft as a big, I think, promoter of Python, I think they will come up with something that all Python developers will be happy in the future for their phones. So the next, um, a more detailed view is also I, I, I um, borrowed from, from Thomas Pearl. Uh, I saw this, I saw this um, website to, to, this morning in his tutorial, and he's a very... Um, very detail, he, he has managed a very detailed table with um, um, language support, supported toolkits and APIs, SDK availability, and publishing possibilities. Just go to his website and browse through this table. It's very nice. So that's the end. I'm
can reach me if you have questions you can ask well now of course uh, or ask me via Twitter or what else. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks Andres. <clears throat> Um, maybe just as a tip for such presentations, uh, I re recently had the same problem. I wanted to present something on Android on a Beamer, and there is a tool called, I think it was Android Beamer, mm -hmm. or, uh, no, Android Projector, sorry, yeah. um, and you can transfer your frame buffer uh, to your laptop and then put it to the Beamer. The only problem yeah. you have sometimes is if your phone resolution is higher than the Beamer resolution, it has no scaling, but it's maybe, if, if one uses an older device or smaller device, it's, it's an option for such stuff. Yeah, I have a solution for that actually, it's called uh, Druid at screen. But this, this was working for my, for my like, major, I usually I have an, an Acer tablet which works very nice with this, this software, but this Lenovo tablet, well, um, well, it's a piece of shit. It doesn't work with <laughs> we, bu we bought it at the company, and it's not working in so many fields, so well, it's not working for that. But I have a solution. Yes, it's also good working. It's free, and it's implemented well it's in Java, but... You have to connect your phone to the to the um, laptop, and then it transfers the, the screen. Is it Windows only? It's in Java. I think it works only on other devices, on other platforms. I don't have a question, but I can uh, add something to the iOS development. Yes. The the guy who wrote, I think it was the guy who wrote the uh, Tiny Pie. He made it like uh, spit out C++ that could then sort of be loaded into Xcode and compile. So he made a tiny little game called Elephants or something that he actually released on the App Store oh, really? that was written in Python in, in Pi game like several years ago and then he yeah, he made it work with a bit of hassle I think. But <laughs> so it's possible to sort of code in a subset of tiny pie yeah. <laughs> and, and make stuff work. Uh, how do you deal with C extension modules in the case of iOS? Do you have to compile them in statically or? Sorry? What uh, C extension modules. For example, the SQLite module, if you want to use that. Is that possible at all? Um, I'm personally not sure, but I think if you do like static linking, I think it's possible. Okay, so you have to know in advance which uh, yes, extension modules yes, you're using and then you're just building one binary, no shared object yeah, at all. Yeah, I right? think that's, that's a must. That you have static linking and one binary. I've n heard of no other like solution or. Oh. Okay. Any more questions? Does, doesn't Kiwi work for a Microsoft phone? Not as far as I know, no. No? I haven't heard or I haven't seen anything for that. I just think it's, it should, shouldn't be a big deal. Again? Uh, something that I missed from the slides was uh, another platform that is very small but has first-class Python support and that's uh, Migo Harmaton. So on the N9 you can really write Python applications. Yeah. You have access to all the APIs and you can publish it in the store but obviously it's, it has a very small market share. Yes. But if you're into, uh, like you can access, I guess it's the same situation with Symbian. We have access to all the native user interface elements, you can do that. So, if people are interested in just doing Python stuff, 
that might be a good option and also to have a native looking UI. Yeah, and this is actually a solution that we are using at, at the German Aerospace Center. We use a phone with, with Migo and um, writing um, test scripts in Python to test the acceleration sensors and then sending the phone with a rocket into space and then afterwards we evaluate the data. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I think you're done. Thank you again, Andreas. I want to remind you that the coffee break will start in 10-15 uh, minutes, so um, could you please wait outside? Thank you.